What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears, and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty, and appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. And I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king, upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Breaks my pate across, pucks up my beard, and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the line that throat as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this? <laughs> Soon I should take it, for it cannot be but I am pigeon livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter, or ere this I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's awful bloody body, villain, remorseless, lecherous, treacherous, kindest villain! Ah! Vengeance! Ah! What an ass am I. This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fire pot. About my grave. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. The murdered or have no tongue will speak with most miraculous horror. I'll have this play of play something like the murder of my father before my uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll taint him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my cause. The spirit that I've seen may be the devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness or my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. <laughs> 